So thank That's you, perfect. Colette, for being here today and uh, doing this presentation. And um, I'll just give you a little background on Colette. She has over 20 years of teaching experience in French as a second language classroom. Uh, from 2014 to 19, she was assigned to the Adolescent Literacy Learning Portfolio as a literacy project lead, supporting professional learning teams and developing resources across Ontario. She is located in the fabulous Sudbury <laughs> in Northern Ontario, where she continues to advance FSL for students from K to 12 as the CPF Ontario Agent de Liaison as well as working as a liaison officer for Edelo. <laughs> Thank you for being here today. Thank you. That's a super hefty uh, intro. <laughs> um, so welcome, uh, Corey and Rebecca. Um, so I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, I'm going to share my screen right now. Oh, wait, let me go back. My apologies. I got to make sure I got the sound because I want to make you hear things. Um, so I'm very pleased. Uh, to be with you today and I'm uh, really uh, impressed that you're spending your lunch hour to uh, find out about applications and different ways that you can uh, further support uh, your children uh, in their journey in French as an additional language and I'd like to use as an additional language because uh, more and more so in Canada we have uh, over 200, 200 different ethnicities and uh, so some some people are, um, you know, at home, their first language is not necessarily English. So it's really become a French as an additional language program. Um, so Bukili is what I'm going to be talking to you about. And it's a free application for anyone across the country. And um, it allows you to have a parent account and teachers. Uh, it's now been extended and teachers can also uh, have an account and include as many students as they want. Um, so that's a different feature. That's why we call it the 2.0. Um, so it is a diversity of uh, children's books en français uh, for kids age four plus, but even younger, if you just want to get them hearing uh, some français, uh, you can use it for those that are younger. Um, they can discover that reading at their own pace and the app is set up so that they can, I'll be showing you that in a minute, they can go independently into there and uh, look through and uh, do some listening and some games. And what's a lovely feature about it is this dashboard that we're talking about here that allows you as parents to keep track of your children's reading progress when they do use the application. So. Um, I always talk about um, the, the sounds or the phonemes that we speak in edu jargon. Um, and there's a lovely chart here at uh, atelier.on.ca that gives you all of those phonemes that uh, are included in the French language. And reading begins with phonemic, phonemic awareness. Um, so it's, a, it's a, a handy resource that I always um, tell parents about. Um, so that they can sort of show their kids and say, look, these, these are just, these are all the sounds. This is doable, right? And an interesting fact is the kids will often say, oh, France is so hard and there's so many rules and there's so many this. Interesting fact, there are more phonemes in English than there actually are in French. So you can tell them, you know, this is probably easier. And a lot of them, uh, some of them are similar. Some of them like the OU, the OU is very particular to Francais, and those are some of the ones that your children might struggle a little bit more with. Uh, the EU, the U, that's another one that uh, kids struggle with uh, when it's not their first language. So just a little bit of um, background and a support resource that you can consult um, if you're interested. So you do have to open an account to get into Bukili. So you either go to bukili.ca and you access it. So I'll be transferring over here. I'm going to get this out of the way. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, anytime you have questions, Corey, uh, don't hesitate to put them in the chat. And if I don't answer right away, it's because when I'm in presentation mode, I don't necessarily see right away, but I will get to them. Okay. Um, 
And uh, so here we are in Bukili. Uh, it's like I said, bukili.ca. And you can navigate everything on French or in English with a simple little click here. That's, it's not letting me do for some reason. That's interesting. So once you do get into the actual application, why is it doing this to me? I'm having fun here. Well, there we go. So the process, I'll go back to my PowerPoint so that you see the process. It will bring you in. You either go through the application, like I said, the bukili.ca, or um, you can go on to a tablet in the app store and simply type in Bukili and it looks like you've got this little raccoon, le, le raton, Gaston le raton. And this is what it looks like on your iPad. And when you initially go in, it will ask you to register and it will ask you to identify as a parent. So I want to go back and I do want to show you if I'm going to log completely out here. Hi, I just, I'm just gonna jump in. I, so I do have, we do have the account set up. And so I am oh. like, we, so I do have that part done. So if, I mean, if you wanna. Oh, okay. Save time, All right. we can jump back to head to that. Okay, point. perfect. Um, that's great. Thank you very much for telling me that. Um, I do appreciate it. Um, so if I'm going to move forward, what I wanted to show you then, if you've already got the account, I'm going to go back into my account. You know how you get into there. Um, I'm going to go into a parent account so you really see what it looks like for you as a parent. So here you have um, the possibility, like I said, of navigating in French or English with a simple click like this. And you want to add your children. And that's as easy as pressing the little click here, putting the name. I don't know, I'm gonna make you a student, Corey just so that you see how easy it is and choose a school year. So let's say you're in second grade and you confirm. And now I have Corey in my, in my group of children uh, within my app. So you will have the listing here. You will have all of the books are available here and they're leveled. So you see there is level one up to level six. And if I look at the details here, so you are in your parent mode at this point, and you can look at the details here. If you're looking for something in particular for your child, uh, it gives you the number of pages, it gives you the number of words, it gives you some themes. So maybe something at school in particular, they're asking you to, you know, your child needs to some help with that spatial orientation. This might be a book that would be of interest, gives you a brief description. You can click here and go read, but I suggest this is simply for you to consult when you're in this parent mode. If you want to do the full experience with the questions and everything else, you have to go to the child space, okay? So I'll just finish with, um, you can change your settings at any time here. So you can change your name, you can change this access code. So when you're, um, when you uh, registered or you opened the account, Corey, did you did they ask you for this access code? Did you add it? Yes, I believe okay. so. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Um, the recording mode, um, you could deactivate it. Right now, it's still not in the process, but because we've done the 2.0, it's in the process of the, uh, the recording mode. And again, it asks about your preferences and whether you want these reports via email. Um, so you can get them weekly or monthly, or if you don't want them, that's what you click on. Do not receive progress reports by email. Okay. So those are all the settings that you can change. And of course, you've got your logout. Um, I will show you, and it's uh, interesting that you can log in with your parent account and you can click to your child's space. Okay. So now we're in the child's zone and depending on which child that you um, that is going to be using um, the application, they will click on their particular name. I'm going to use Stephanie because I think she's got a little bit more going on. Um, 
you can add this code if you like. They're all image codes. So caters really to children who don't necessarily read and they will normally remember an animal uh, more clearly. I propose that you stick to one animal straight across because then, especially if you have several children, it becomes much easier. I hope that's the right one. Yes. And then you are, this is what your child sees when they um, log on. So they've got their icons on the side here. Once again, not in writing because some of them are at the beginning of the reading um, stage. Um, this is in English. If you want to navigate it, you want your child to navigate in French, make sure you click it here before they go in. Okay. Sorry, I gotta go back to my rabbits again. Sorry about that. Oop. Okay. All right, so you have their icons on the side. So the first one is the books. And depending on um, if they've been assigned a certain level, les livres pour moi is the books for them that might have been assigned either by a teacher or um, that has been attributed thanks to a level that's been attributed to them. Voir tous les livres, I should have stayed in English. Sorry about that. I'm going to go back again and go back to English. I just wanted you to know that before your child goes in, that's where you have to pick the language of communication. Apologies, I'm going back and forth here. Hopefully I'm not making you sick. There we go. Okay, so they can see all the books. And again, there's um, six levels and there's a hundred and over 120 different books. And you just scroll along here when you get to the level and you can see them according to different themes and some of the characters. There are some series, um, if you see here at level five. So there's a whole series of these that are similar in length, uh, similar in characters, similar uh, in vocabulary level. So if your child likes one particular uh, book within that series, then it's suggested that, you know, you can give them those additional readings. So um, once they are, they pick a, a book. Here's what it looks like again for them. So they can go in the narration mode. And that's what I was talking about where children that are younger uh, could also just listen to the books or if you've got different age brackets. So for some reason, it's super huge here. Pupil T, pupil T. No, it's not working. So in the narration mode, it will be read to them. Écrit par Isabelle Lemay, illustré par Laurie Stein. And of course, the lower the level, uh, the Voici slower it Gaston. is. And you can see this is a level one book, so there's very little words. There's one short sentence. C'est sa fête. And then it will go on. Voici ses amis. And like the repetition of the... Zoé la chenille of the uh, the format Antoine because that's key at the beginning Amélie. of the repetition and then bon anniversaire once they get to the end of the book this is when they have those comprehension questions and they again you can navigate in English but the content the books and the questions are all en français with the purpose of um, integrating the child and immersing them in the language. If they are not at the point where they can read all of these questions, you've got the little ear icon here and you can click on that. Pourquoi les amis sont-ils venus chez Gaston? Because that's the way that we first developed the language acquisition is really that oral communication and the oral production. And so um, this allows them to understand uh, and do the comprehension questions without necessarily having to um, be able to read them at the onset. Even the answers. Pour son anniversaire. Be, my bar is in the way here. Even the answers can be listened to. Pour Noël. Pour l'Halloween. Uh, and when you hit the right ask, answer, Gaston Le Raton says, yay, congratulations. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I'm picking all the right answers and I haven't even read this book. Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. 
if it's the wrong answer, he kind of has the thumbs down and, and a little bit more of a, an image. Um, it will again congratulate them if they can't read it. Well done on that reading. Reread this book or pick another book to keep improving. And so the more they read, the more it adds to their trips. Uh, I just want to go back and show you once again um, if they are in solo mode, they can be reading independently. But if they get stuck, for instance, I don't know, they look at this room, oh, c'est ça, I don't, I don't know that word. They can ask for some help. C'est ça fait. And then they can repeat, c'est ça fait. Okay. And then they can keep going. So at any time when you see that little ear, that allows the child to listen or in that solo mode allows them to get a little bit more support. The recording, as I stated, is coming up. And that is a really interesting option where they can record themselves reading it. And that in turn goes into the dashboard. And uh, you will be able to also listen to the recording of the child and see some progression if they read a certain book um, a few weeks apart or if they go back to it and do several readings and or listening sessions and then they decide to record themselves, then that gives you an idea of how accurate they are. The other piece here in the icons is um, my trips ou mes voyages. And depending on, uh, now it's too small again. Do, do, do. There we go. Um, depending on how much reading, how many books they have read within the applications, they move ahead in their destinations. The first destination is Le Canada and les États-Unis, and there's, I think there's over 30 of them, there's quite a few. And so the more that they read, the more that they get to travel. And you can see at the top here, um, this child hasn't done a lot of reading, um, so they're only in the States, and it tells them how many books they need to read to move on to the next destination. And what that destination and those trips give them is access to games. Okay, so here, you have three types of games. You've got the memory game, you've got a matching game, and you have a seek and find game. And again, this is much more visual. It's fun. Oh, what luck. Again, I had no idea. So it allows them to play games, and we know that children always like that. We don't give them automatically all the games, and that's the whole idea is for them to do to pursue their reading. The seek and find is vocabulary. Once again, the support of the ear. Right? So if they want to get... You still need to find Feuille d'érable, oh, okay. castor, so, train, tasse, Here ciseaux. you just click on it and that tells you what object it is. So if they need to have it... You still need to find castor, train, tasse, ciseaux. So it repeats it for them. So children usually like that sort of that game aspect of things. Um, there is also a written sample. So once your children get a little bit older, um, they've got the idea of a postcard. Nowadays, you would almost consider a lot of times the classroom teacher will ask for emails kind of thing. But again, gives a little bit of a simple sample of writing and it speaks to the country that that destination where your child is at. Once again, you have the ears so they can hear it. Bienvenue au Canada. Le deuxième pays au monde pour sa superficie. Ici, tu peux monter au sommet de la Tour CN à Toronto. And of course, it highlights different things of those countries. Um, what's interesting, see, she hasn't done enough reading. This student hasn't done, or this child hasn't done enough reading. So those games in the United States are locked. And that's how you see the difference. So you tell them, oh, you got to go do a little bit more reading. They go back to some books and they will eventually access the other games. So that's the whole notion behind that. This is a uh, wardrobe, so costume. So if I go back, uh, if I go back to the Canada, I'll have some more options because I've read enough to go beyond there. Okay. And if I go to costumes, so the wardrobe here, is you can change and put different items of wardrobe on Gaston Le Raton here. 
and different options of accessories. So again, that fun part of things and usually themed within that country. So here I was in the States, so hence the I love New York, etc. This other icon on the left hand side brings you directly to the games. So you're making dinner and you just want them to be amused. You can tell them, okay, go in, log in and go straight to the games. And that way they can access the ones that they are um, privy to. Also shows a little bit of geography. So as they're going through, um, it allows them to see where these different uh, states. So you're doing a little bit of social science, you're doing a little bit of reading, you're doing a bit, a lot of listening, and you're having that sort of game part to it as well. Um, so when your child is done using the application and you want to go back to your parent space, this is where that code that you developed comes in handy. And you can go back to your particular um, uh, dashboard. And if you wanna see in depth what your child has done, I'm gonna to go to Stephanie because that's the only one I've got some stats on here. You click on this little arrow and it will give you some details as to where she's progressed in the trips. So how much she's done. It will give you an idea of if the book is read or not. If they, once they get to the recording, this is where you would access them. And if you want more details, it will give you um, how they did as far as the success rate on the quiz and how long they were in the book. So this is interesting because if there's only 20 seconds there, you know that the child probably just went click, 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 click through the pages, much like I did. I cheated a while ago to show you the end um, result to get to the comprehension questions. So this gives you an idea of how much time they're actually spending doing that reading. Um, it gives you, again, the stats of which level the book is at and, and so on. So if there is some reading that's assigned or you know, you know, that's pretty much the level where your child should be practicing, this is a handy tool to go see. And the settings that I had showed you at the beginning where it said you wanted a, either a weekly or a monthly report, this is what that report contains. It gives you a summary of uh, how much your child has used the platform or not. This little piece up here, um, if you wanted to, you can change the name. This is where you can pick that code. If you have several children and you want to keep on top of who's doing the actual reading, then you can give them each an individual code that you hope they'll keep secret. If you don't want to bother with that, you simply have to take that off and then they just can go in. But if you've got the one account for your three children, when they log in, they see everyone's and they can freely go into everyone's and say, you know, I don't know, I'm, your children are honest and they wouldn't do this, but sometimes someone will say, oh, just go do the reading for me. I don't feel like it and whatever. And so it appears that it's Stephanie, for example, that did the reading, but it's actually Corey that did it for them. So that's why they have this access code piece here. Um, a little more pertinent for the classroom uh, because you don't necessarily want the kids going into each other's portfolio kind of thing, but um, it's, it's handy to, to know that you can do that if you want, if you want to keep them very separate. Um, so that's the dashboard. Okay, I'm gonna save that for now. Um, I'm just trying to make sure I've gone through everything that I need to go through here. Bottom line is the best way for you to use this is for your child to be exposed. Um, if you want to help your children progress, the best thing you can do is simply expose them to the language as much as possible. Um, so I, the other piece too is uh, within the books, you can have themes up here. So you can do some, some searching according to these different uh, filters. So the reading levels here, um, granted, they don't correspond directly with the reading levels of some of those assessment tools that their teachers might use. But um, for instance, if they tell you that your child is at the, I don't know, the A level, um, you can go see um, some correlations that tell you at that A level in Pontus, uh, Fontes and Pinnell, 
there's usually, I don't know, 20 words. They usually give you an average count of words at the different levels. That's where this detail piece can help you know if that particular level in Bukili is helping you um, uh, get them some practice at something that's similar in level. The other piece here is themes. So for instance, if they're doing, um, they're doing habitats and they're doing animals and you want them to hear more French, you can apply that. And there we go, because I, you've got the different ones at level one that uh, speak to animals. This one in particular is about the habitats. That's the reason I brought that up because I know I used it in the classroom last year and uh, um, an SK in a grade one. And then of course, there's the school years here. Um, okay. Um, where they've got just the elementary levels. Um, so there's a series of different, usually there's the one on seasons, there's friendship, there's travel, there's a lot of different themes that are um, already um, pre-programmed within the, uh, the collection of all the books. Um, okay. I'm going to go back to my slide deck here, but I want to move down. I have, um, here, I'll just do it this way. Okay. So you already know, Corey, the different levels and you confirmed. Um, this is where I wanted to make sure that you knew you could change um, the passcodes if you wanted to. I'm just, I wrote myself a little list to make sure that I went through everything for you. The contra, the function of ear and the quick view for parents. So the other thing that I also like to highlight is just so that you know, in case um, teachers are using it in the classroom, what it looks like uh, when you're getting that uh, input and you're being asked to join uh, from a teacher's perspective, the teacher will have, um, let me move this again. You can see here that there's a code, a class code that the teacher will share with you as the parents. And when the child goes to log in, there is this possibility of, I have a class code and they simply log in that way. And it will punch up like this. You enter the code and then you will connect. And that's when you will get the view, the student's view. Uh, or the child's view, um, and they will click on their own name that the teacher will have added. The teacher will have added students, just like you add a child, and then you have the profile of all of them. The child clicks on their particular name, and they would use the code uh, that the teacher will have attributed to them, and they move from there. And the teachers can, they have that one feature um, that's different from your own, where they can assign different readings to the students and then expect them to you know do the comprehension questions and so on and that too um, they have a dashboard where they can see the progression um i guess you're going to have idelo this afternoon but uh i always um Bukili is an application that's been made available through idelo that's a huge learning resource and um you can open a parent account here as well. And your child through their teacher can also open an account. And here there are other digital books, but there's a myriad of all kinds of videos. And I hear that Pascal is gonna be uh, mentioning and elaborating on some of those. Um, I encourage you to um, open an account there as well. Um, I guess um, I would want to, I'm going to, go back into the child space and let you listen to uh, a bit more of a book so that you get a real idea of what it sounds like you didn't hear too much a while ago. Come on. Okay. Um, I wanna go into a book that's a little bit more advanced so that you can see, I didn't ask you, Corey, how old your children are, but um, just so that you see.
I've got too many bars here in my way. Logan Economies, écrit et illustré par Eric Pelado. Au magasin, Logan découvre un jouet qu'il désire. « Maman, je le veux! Peux-tu me l'acheter? » So you can see that that was at um, level... Which one was that? Level 3? And then if you get to level 6... Uh, no, I don't like that one. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to give you like sort of the, the span. There. Oop. So that gives you a little bit more of an idea. Now you've got four or five Voici sentences. Voici la famille de Kiko. Kiko a deux papas. Papa Michael et Papa Hiro. And the, um, Kiko the other et Sarah ont la même maman. Elle s'appelle Yannicka. Elle habite dans une autre maison. Kiko et Sarah lui parlent souvent. The other thing that happens as you move through and you progress through the, um, the levels, the images that are there, Um, in the first levels, it's extremely concrete and the wording is directly related to the image. There's never anything in those first couple of levels that will be uh, abstract or that would um, differ from what the images are portraying. Whereas when you get into some of the levels of, um, especially in the sixth level, you might have images that are a little less concrete and they will take on subjects that are a little bit um, more developed so that you're developing not only the reading but some social skills um, and some social science. For instance, this whole notion in this particular book is um, the child has two fathers. So it's it uh, a lot of the books uh, or some of the books um, have that expansion of subjects that you want to take on in different subject areas, not just in the French class. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to check. Oh, somebody else joined us. Welcome, Faber. Um, I hope you heard enough. Um, I'm wondering if you have any questions or if there's something in particular you'd want me to, to show you or repeat. No, I think that was helpful. It's, yeah, it's kind of a good overview and to kind of get a better understanding of, of what it was. Because like I said, we had the account, we logged in and, um, but it wasn't always, it wasn't super clear, I guess, how you progressed through the trips and, and how that went. So it makes more sense now. Great, great. How old are your children, Corey? Uh, oldest is six. So he's in French immersion um, okay. right now in grade one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah, then we have, uh, The next is four. He'll he'll start next year. Okay, okay, yeah. And and even when they're close in age like that, even getting getting them to listen together or or um, getting the older one once he gets into his, his reading and sharing some of that, uh, this is a, a neat uh, application and easily acceptable um, that allows them to support that, so yeah. that you don't have to be the one that's doing it all the time. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, Colette, I, I, yes. what age group would you say or what grade level does Bukili go to? Like, where does it max out? Yeah, um, I, I would think grade four, five, mostly for, I know that not all children will necessarily be, um, you know, there's that whole differentiation and everything else, but the images in a lot of them are, Uh, more childlike. So, you know, beyond grade four, five, yeah, I wouldn't go much further than that because I think that would insult them. You know, it's, it's, it's um, of high interest and different levels for those younger children. I could definitely say it's a great tool for, for building reading skills, definitely. And yeah, uh, yeah some, some children just would race through it and then be on to like, you know, hardcover, long, long stories. So. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. 
absolutely. Any other questions or comments? I, I in my shift, I didn't bring my, I have no idea what time it is. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> We're at 1240. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if no one has any other questions, I'd like to thank you ever so much, Colette, for doing that presentation. And it's um, certainly great for Canadian parents uh, for French in Nova Scotia, because we often get asked by parents, you know, like, you know, can you find me books at this level, etc. And uh, now I will just send everybody I know to Bukili because it seems there amazing. There you go. That's great. <laughs> the other thing too is, um, I mean, I was consultant at my board uh, supporting the French as a second language, and I did a lot of presentation for parents. Um, your local library has a lot of eBooks that are accessible too. So that's that's just, I mean, I shouldn't be saying that, I guess, but. <laughs> I, I just want to support parents and I know they 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 struggle. Yeah. We even uh, opened a little reading nook at our branch and we have a little free library. Oh, lovely. I know one of the, the problems is, you know, when your children are little, they'll read a lot. So, you know, like you either have to visit the library a lot or you, you're buying the books. But here at the little free library, you could just come and, and borrow some books and bring them back whenever. <laughs> Right. And even, like I said, the more, even if they are only listening to the narration, any exposure you can give them over and above the classroom is bonus. And I commend all of you for, for, you know, being here and, and putting in the time to try and find those because that's the bottom line. I would, it's, it's making them see that outside of the classroom, it also has a purpose, right? Super. So thanks, thanks for that. And we'll look forward to seeing Pascal in another hour. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Thank you for coming today, uh, Colette. All right, bon courage and stay well. Stay Merci. hopeful and stay well. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye. Au revoir.